Welcome to Isn't It Obvious, where things are obvious. <laughs> That's going to be an intro. Welcome to Isn't It Obvious, where I talk the least in a cold open. I am your host for this episode, Micah, with Phil and Sarah. And on today's episode, isn't it obvious that our education system should incorporate more of the gamification in how it educates its peoples? You're going to have to define that for us laymen here. You can use that as an example. So, do you remember, what was it, Number Munchers in elementary yes. school? Oh, yeah, yep. that's great. And Oregon Trail, and what was it? So, the what if Dino Oregon Park Trail, Titan? what if in Oregon Trail, instead of somebody always dying to dysentery because, you know, <sighs> Terry deserved to be dissed, but he always took it personally? Sure. <laughs> You were actually taught the history of the Western expansion of the United States. Where you had small little glimpses, you went to Denver, Colorado, or wherever you stopped to get off of the Missouri River kind of thing, but you found out more of the history of that area, and that was incorporated in the game. So you're not just playing a game about trying to go from St. Louis to the Pacific Ocean, but you also learn the history of that whole process. In a game. You didn't learn. But it's encapsulated in a game. You didn't have the history. Like, you didn't think about it. Like, why you were crossing the expanse. You were just playing the game. Because no. I was thinking yeah. about the history. I was like, I oh, wasn't. man, fuck this. Because that wasn't this incorporated. Because it was a game that was made in 1988. I was thinking, like, ah, oh, that sounds hard. People, like, actually <laughs> died on these journeys. Let's not ever do that. That's Well, you scary. never diss Terry. That's why. It, yes. No. You can't. Fuck, fucking Terry had a vendetta. <laughs> You murdered like, my whole family. Fording the river, like you had like a, you had to decide like, am I going to risk my family and my livelihood to cross this river? And you're like, I can't turn back though. The game is literally, you have to move forward. I can't just decide not but to. But what if turning back was an option as a lot of pilgrims did because it was too rough? Or what if you made the horrible decision to cross the Sierra Nevada and you starting you in lost November, your wife and, children. and you got there in December, and you turned into the Donner Party. Oh, mm. well, that's a little different. <laughs> it is, but it's a thing of history. Like, how can we not use games to more are adequately you, you inform saying, and educate the youth? Are you saying we should have the Donner Party as one of the routes in <laughs> Oregon Trail? <laughs> uh, on account <laughs> that Rush Limbaugh just said that we need to accept coronavirus. Much like the Donner Party I would embraced like, cannibalism. I would like... Yes, because what he is doing is wrong, and he's capitalizing on the ignorance of Americans I would like to make his point that people agree with. coronavirus into his hearth and home, and then regret. <laughs> yeah, it'd be great if he did a show in, like, a bar surrounded by fans instead of, like, in his specially made basement in his mansion somewhere in probably California. He can accept coronavirus in but, his lungs. That would be fine with me. <laughs> with the technology that we have now and the complexity, sophistication, and level of interactivity that video games offer now, is that not an untapped resource to make a new number munchers that, I don't know, would be like but, cool number munchers version 8932. Whoa! For the kids. I... You'd have that can to... help teach mathematics in different ways. I think the problem with with this, though, like I agree I with it. I hated number munchers, though. I hated it. Uh, number it munchers wasn't was fun. What about Mavis Beacon? Great. Huh? Number munchers was great. Mavis Beacon. Yeah, number munchers I was. I fucking amazing. hated it. I liked Dino T Park Tycoon, though. That was fun. I mean, I guess that'd be like a economics, business yeah, class uh, economics. Not really economics. Well, but you're right. It, business. Definitely small business management. Yeah, business management. But. In that same vein, like Roller Coaster Tycoon, it was detrimental if you relied on nostalgia. You always had to keep innovating in order to keep your park relevant yeah. and to keep it profitable. That is a teaching tool that is applicable to real life. Yep. Should American education system include more types of those, the theory behind those games well, with, to teach um, the youth complex ideas? With a lot of, with the coronavirus thing and, and a lot of classes going to virtual only right now i mean even if we have in-person classes i think the video then, games are definitely an app untapped resource that absolutely could help teach children especially if they are not getting one-on-one -on -one or in-person learning i'll be honest watching like a zoom cast of some lecture probably will not engage me as much as a video game would i think a video game would definitely be because the interactivity is built into it yeah, 
You're not a passive. Exactly. You are actively experimenting, learning. Yeah, there, there, there's an element of trial and error that is built into the system that is not that passive. More forgiving and repeatable. Not that I don't. Not that I should discredit passive learning. Like passive learning is also important too. I think you know not everyone is into games, which is unfortunate because right. they are fun and they're an easy tool to use. And I think they could benefit a lot of. Phil, people. we're both looking at you. But <laughs> well, I'm just saying. Not everyone is as engaged with games. Like, I'm not the biggest gamer. I do like games, and I do play them, but I am more of a let's play Stardew Valley or Harvest Moon. I like farming games. That's kind of my MO. I like Minecraft because it's a sandbox where I can build whatever I want. I don't really care about killing stuff or learning how to... But, like, what crunch part numbers? of education would revolve around killing stuff? Huh? <laughs> what part of edu- what part of the K through twelve education system would revolve around well, killing stuff? Well, I'm talking stuff? about just games in general. But right, but I'm not talking about games as they but are like, now. I'm okay, about games okay, as I'm not really tool. interested in. I wasn't. I didn't care about number munchers. I thought it was boring and not my wheelhouse. Not my like. I didn't care. Like I'm not bad. I was never bad at math. I did very well in school. I just didn't care about that game. I was just like, this is dumb. Also, the... Did you ever play 2048 or something? Oh, yeah. yeah. Where you had the 5x5 five five grid, and you had to merge numbers of the same amount to get to... Was it 2048? I mean, it was like a certain number, and you just had, like, some people occasionally beat it, and then they yeah. take a screenshot, and look, look, I did it! And, like, yeah. it took and me then you have the years. one that gets up to, like, 40,000, and you're like, huh? I... <laughs> I like think, the people that break the game and figure out. All right, how to make here's it. my official response to your isn't it obvious is that uh, I think there's a density of information issue when it comes to video games and trying to transmit enough information from one person to another. They try to do this type of thing with an overhead projector when we were younger, and now they have some documentary that people watch. But the problem with games as a learning tool is that it's not, bang for the buck time-wise, not efficient. It wouldn't be able to click fast enough for many students. It could be like an auxiliary tool as a hook. So Richard Feynman was like one of the physics teachers, and one of his problems was that he couldn't get enough of his students at whatever te- like university he was teaching at to be interested in his topic. So... He always had what was the this analogy of boring topic. Sorry, go on. Well, I mean, it's physics, but okay. you know, some, the people that are signing it at a university level, yeah. they they would be interested in what he had to say, presumably. But he kind of uh, made the analogy as a fish hook, and you have to have different types of lures. So some people would be interested in history, other people would be interested in the pure math, other people would be interested in application, and other people would be interested in examples. But the problem he had the most of was people who just did it for career, right? So he taught in Brazil, and I guess he was working on his Portuguese at that time. But the problem he had the most of, and he had this huge speech in in, 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 the, in that university, was the students can recite exactly what the prism of this light would do when it hits this thing. And they would give you the textbook example, and that's how they would write the answer. But then when he grabbed the piece of glass and put it in the window and said, what is this? None of them were able to answer it because, again, they were only looking at it from a career perspective. I'm going to get this answer. I'm going to put it in my brain. When I get prompted to this on this multiple choice, I'm going to insert this I'm response. Gonna regurgitate. <laughs> when, regurgitate. Right. When was that cited from? I mean, this was, was like doing that? 1960s, 70s. So 50 years ago. Right. Old. So, like, the old. most advanced game then was Pong, where you had two paddles bouncing a ball back and forth on a black plane. But this is the same problem. Like, not the, the textbook thing. I mean, the, the problem is that... So the thing by rote, the, our education system is based on memory, not on application. Right. I mean, that's... And can we not have a greater use of application in a video game setting? Not as opposed to a memorization so, of a road answer. I don't know if you guys had to do back in high school. In high there were two math programs that we as students could choose from. There was the I went to a poor school. Uh, well, okay, there was the by rote textbook version, and then there was the practical application version. And mm-hmm. me thinking that ah, oh, practical application sounds more interesting. I took that route. It was stupid. It was the stupidest thing I've ever like. 
I don't know who designed this fucking program. It's like managing budgets or something? Well, or? no, it wasn't even that. It was They would give you random situations and they would like tell you a fucking story. And I'm like, I don't need a fucking story. What, so like a train leaves yeah, Pittsburgh Yeah, something like that. Yeah. And I'm just like, just give two. me the math. Never mind. Fuck this. This is stupid. This is all irrelevant. I can... Like, I have the brain power to take what I learned by rote and apply it to real life. I have that well, power. Maybe it would work differently for someone else, but I discovered in that little thought experiment that I don't have the patience to deal with that kind of learning. I took the... Uh, my school offer. But if both. that was incorporated in a narrative where, to, to make this action gamey, you had to find what train junction to divert a train that left Pittsburgh going 60 miles an hour that was meeting a train from Cincinnati going 40 miles an hour and they were on the same track. If you had that sense of like urgency to work through that math and you had a positive or negative outcome in all that a would very teach me, digital Micah, sense. All that would teach me, Micah, is that I'm not a person who would be in charge of train planning or train diversion. <laughs> Right. My response to this, that, but that that type of that that type of situation or that narrative won't catch you as opposed to just the flat I would line. Prefer... Like you started that train from Pittsburgh, then you started that train from Cincinnati, and then you realize they were on the same thing. Like the the, the gamification is making it. For maybe that you would be more interested. Your interaction. Maybe you would be more interested in that, but no, no, I'm not me... saying this. This is not a personal thing. This is an application yeah. for the I, youth to interact. My with. brain no. was like, I don't care. This isn't real, and I don't care. That's what my brain did. As a teenager, I I looked... Sarah, you know money isn't real now, but it's very important. What? Now look, <laughs> money is not real. A dollar is, doesn't stand for a damn thing other than what we say it is. You understand yeah. that, well, right? Not with inflation. It's definitely but not more real. The, <laughs> look, the scenario... How's that name different from a train leaving Pittsburgh? The scenario that... Or the scenarios, I should say, the multiple scenarios that I had to read a fucking paragraph of. Like, someone had to, like, take their time and come up with these little mini stories of these right. occurrences. And it wasn't. No, that was just... clearly a failed right. English I'm going to shut this down. Got their here. master's degree. I'm going to stop, you guys. So, to answer Sarah's question, yes, we had a choice between Core Plus back then, which is now defunct, because that's like 20 years ago, and 21. Good God. God, and uh, and traditional is what they called it. And my brother took me aside and said, you're signing up for traditional no matter what. Yeah. And I've already talked to the teacher to get you into traditional because you're supposed to do something. And so that, I went traditional and I, I enjoyed it very much. My poor editor took the core plus one and, and it was total trash. Did not yeah. prepare her at all at university level. It was just a joke. And the reason why was because there are some things you just need to do by, uh, again, math doesn't really and shouldn't change, but there are just some things that you just need to have the tools for to be able to understand how they work. And in, in the case of traditional math, it's just very blunt and straightforward. To go back to the original story that I was trying to explain is that some people are going to look at this as a game right now. So the people that at that time of story looked at it like, I just need to get this course so I can get my career. I'm not really interested in this class as for what it is. And so those kids are, I would say, ahead of the curve in understanding what the game is. The game is to get out with a good grade. If you're actually interested in the subject, fine. Go by all means be, you know, no, look, delve into, well it, into it. But if you're here for a job, which is what it should be even back then, then you do play this game as it is laid out. So in the case of having a, a, like a digital multimedia system where it is a game where you understand more of the context of like the Civil War or Gettysburg or whatever it is, it's only going to be able to hook some students in, not everyone. So the best way I can understand like orbital mechanics would be to play Kerbal Space Program, right? Like it would finally click in my head about how these Newton's laws work. Because until then, I just had all these tools and like I just barely can calculate where the rocket would go based off what I knew in classical Newtonian I mean, physics. I, I think worms is better than Kerbal, but But sure. like for some people, like the light bulb finally clicked when they got all the tools and like, oh, I can actually apply it now. And I'm like, okay, good for the small fraction of motherfuckers that were able to make that work for them. And I don't know if that gamification of history, chemistry, physics, math, mathematics i would love if my school had that option to learn that way for sure but i am also concerned about like the time density issue the school has a certain amount of time to be able to get students with their heads filled with this information probably through rote memorization in order to get to them to the next point point. and again the school system isn't about teaching or thinking 
It's really just about meeting these certain requirements to be able to move on to the next. So that by the time you're at the end, you know who the kids are that are good and who, the, and more importantly, which ones are not. And the good ones, they get to go and pursue a career that's better. And for everyone else, like me, you're going to have a, a terrible time of it. Our system is right now based off of feeder system. Phil, who are you talking to? Who are you talking to, Phil? <sighs> no, no, no. You activated my track card, Phil. Because <laughs> this was not merely a discussion about the gamification of education. It was, we need to systemically change our education system in America. Well, yeah, that I completely think that's mm-hmm. agreed with. Why are we even oh, bothering wow, that, to that learn? Way I don't even impossible. know why we bother to learn when no one takes any of that learning seriously. <laughs> you want us to get educated, but you're not going to listen to educated people. What's the point of this? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. You have people who are specialized to be an authority on a subject, and you're just, just going to ignore all of their advice. Okay. Stupid idiots who refuse to wear masks. <laughs> well, there, there was this... And, uh, isn't it obvious, listeners, please welcome to the program, Dr. Fauci. There was this problem where, why do I need to learn how, like, biology and any of this other stuff? I'm never going to use it. And, but if you would have learned how it works, then you'd be wearing a mask you right now. You would kind of understand generally. Yeah. You don't have to be an expert, but you would at least understand nope. enough to yep. be like, okay, that person who is an authority right. sounds like he's telling us something that sounds legit. But, also, it was, it was real fun when Trump finally wore a mask that a whole bunch of right-wing pundits were like, ooh, the left's got nothing now. He finally wore a mask five months after he should have worn a fucking mask. Although I will say, he could just keep not wearing a mask. I'd be no, fine with that. My... <laughs> that. That's still too good of a death. My, my thought here... I, I don't even care how good of a death he gets. I just want him gone. <laughs> you really want Mike Pence in charge, eh? <laughs> He won't win. Mm, Trump still mm. has a chance to win again. Uh, Mike Pence has zero chance. I hate them all. Anyway, my, my thought here polls. is that we really shouldn't be teaching. But yeah, I think the, the education system as it is right now is really geared towards the upper middle class, to be honest, because the uh, the one percent are going to send their kids to a private school where they're going to get actually pri- like a proper education. Trump and went more to a private important. school. And more importantly, he was a one percent. He is not smart. More importantly, but the system works for him. Fuck your point is right. Connections. Yeah. And again, the whole idea of school is really just a jobs program. I, I would argue someone to the death about this. Yeah. No, no, no. It's, it's instilling the uh, factory rigor and words. Yep. The, yeah. It's uh, you learn a thing. Yeah. And you you're turn you're it being out. built for an eight hour a day system. Okay. And then after yep. you're done with your, whatever education, you are just going to repeat that eight hour a day system, even though that is inefficient and is not the best way to be a productive member of society it's what we've instilled because industrialization is bad and we're horrible humans that are not adapting or taking things seriously god we're we're kind of a shit species aren't we Mm. we are but anyway (laughs) (laughs) we can dwell on that as much as we want i'll spend the next 12 minutes doing so (laughs) <laughs> Phil's right though when he says it's a, just a it's a job works program like it's you're, you're you go to school to learn various skills that you could apply to any number of potential jobs when you graduate it's it's giving you as much as it as much as we think is potentially valuable but also like fluff there's extra stuff too home ec and other... Uh, the ability to cook a meal is pretty fucking important I really and, like, think so and I know people sewing who... is fucking important as a yeah, fat I, ass, actually, I have had to, like, half-ass sew so many buttons onto the pants that I should not be wearing anymore. And they all the failed. Like if it. I had paid attention in the one class I had in sixth grade for five weeks, I might be better at sewing. And these are all important things. I think they're fluff, though. To I, I, I disagree. Most people aren't going to go I, I into it. I disagree that it's fluff. It's important life skills, but it's fluff to the job works I, thing. I also yeah. disagree. It's, you're not necessarily, like, most people aren't going to go into that, that's embroidery. A, but having that information is applicable outside of embroidery. Yes, it is. It's definitely Thus useful it's not for fluff. just general life, but I, that would be fluff to a jobs work program. Like, it's not an associate's who, no, degree. No, no, sure, but who likes sites in sixth grade? I made a pillow in a job interview. I no. Was the that part of a job, job interview? Work. But no, that's a good practical yeah. knowledge to have because it teaches you more things beyond than just making a pillow. It is like the, the issue patience here is and not construction that, uh, and yes, but is that really going to help you in the future? 
for a job. If you can express that demeanor. Making that pillow. And the core things, like the fact that it's a small blip. Making. How you were so condescending about it. Learning how to cook an egg, Micah. (laughs) That's (laughs) self-sufficient. In home ec. If I'm not relying on someone making my meals. You're not necessarily going to directly apply that to your job interview. You would be more likely to talk about a different experience. Then. I'm not, I'm not citing these sugar. things as things in a job interview. <laughs> I'm saying that these life skills you learn as a child when you are the most malleable and receptive to new information, yep. that it will be mm-hmm. important that you have that as opposed to not. Yes. But not for your career necessarily. What is a career? Again, I, I, for your wait. living, for living and cooking, yes. All right, I'm going to stop here. Basically, <laughs> the whole idea of the education program for K through 12 is to get into a good university. So, like, when you go on an interview, you're not talking about an interview like at IBM. You're talking about an interview to get into admissions. So yeah. then at that time, you could talk about egg frying and, and embroidery. Because at this point, you're trying to collect as much as you can to be able to get to the next step. Once you're at college, who cares about the stuff in the past? Now it's the next game of internships and schmoozing and But networking. even if you aren't going to a college, if you are going straight into the workforce in high school, you're not going to cite your sixth grade home ec class. But what exactly. you learn there it's is still important. Fluff. But that's... It's, I'm not saying it's not important. I'm saying it's just fluff to a jobs works right. program. It's something you can apply to your life and how you are successful in your private life, but it has nothing really, almost nothing, to do with the average person's livelihood when they're making money and performing a service. Unless they actually go into embroidery, they're not going to be citing that pillow. That I'm not saying they're so ever that. citing it. <laughs> I don't know how we got onto we're citing what we did in sixth grade. No, I'm saying that issue, is not. You're just be, arguing with me about the term. It is not something plus, to be just all. cast aside. As is still an important skill to know that has applications beyond what that is in sixth grade. Yeah, but that's the yeah, but it has okay. nothing to do with your job. That's what I'm saying. And then the next part of this problem is that, like, (laughs) we're trying to teach them through gamification some of these, of some knowledge. But no one cares about this. At the end of the day, what the school system feeding program cares about is who's at the top percent, the top 10. And we're going to take those kids and we're going to have those kids have a good life. The bottom 90% or so, fuck them. They're on their own. You're on your own. And that's that's the way that the system's been set up for 100 years. Like, even Japan copied that system when they thought, oh, that's actually a pretty good system, they said. Like, when they started, like, looking for different types of educational platforms. So the U.S. system is really based off a feeder program. So actually trying to improve the education on the kids is not on their agenda. Their agenda is we want to have a, a simple, easy way of bucketing kids into Good, bad, cream of the crop, fuck everyone else. So does the and gamification does not also facilitate that? Nope. Because the gamification... How does it not? Because you then have a... Like, you could incorporate a point let him, system. Let him fucking explain that. You can incorporate a point fi- system in these educational systems that then give you a more distinct cream of the crop. I tried. No, that's what the game is already. The game is... The school is the game. You have <laughs> A to F grades, right? You have GPAs. You have... Things like extracurricular activities. Problem is, no one. But then that's that also is. corruptible. No one is aware no, that it's that's a also game. corruptible. Because it's absolutely corruptible. Like that's the point of the. the there's a game. So you the point is, and then there's the the games to be have fucking. Loopholes. The game is here. It is GPA, extracurricular activities, all this other stuff. Meta game, right? That's the more interesting part of the game. And then you have like <laughs> cheat codes. How rich you are. <laughs> Who do, you, who do you know? Do you know the how, dean because... How angry is your mom is, if you get in trouble? Right. Like, these are all... How much of a Karen Practical is <laughs> strategies and tactics to get the fuck out of at least that point of that chapter. And then you have to play a different type of game, still same thing, for the rest of your fucking life. It doesn't end at college. It doesn't end at your first job. It never ends. So here's the thing about this, about, like, actually educating people through games, is I would argue... We should actually educate people on just two fucking core competencies. One, how to find information. So it's like, hey, I need you to make that pillow right the fuck now. You have a day to do this. And then I would bet your ass that that kid would go to Google, right? YouTube and figure it out. YouTube. And then you say, okay, nice pillow, asshole. Now I want you to play the first five chords of this song. Figure it out. That's actually more important skills because they're actually going out looking for things they didn't know how to and doing the recursive loop of trying to find out what they're looking for. And, and topics they have no clue. 
But the idea is that they're honing their skills and looking for what they need to be able to get out of a, a product that they had no idea they had any knowledge in. I don't care that they actually know the five chords or know how to make a pillow. What I care about is can they get this information quickly and master it and get it back? The second skill that they need to fucking figure out is basic critical thinking. So if someone gives them some bullshit thing like, oh, did you know that, you know, America for the past hundred years had a feeder system and it's the top cream of the crop and only the 10% go, you know, and then you actually believe that, then fuck you. Like you actually need to critically think and say, well, no, I don't actually believe that's the case. And I'm going to Google to counter you, right? Like those are the two skills I really wish my kids will have because that's all they need to know to how to fucking game this system. That's it. But like the idea of actually giving them like, oh, you're actually interested in math and physics and space orbital mechanics or like Gettysburg. And here's a game that shows you that I would be more than happy to give them that thing. But that's and, and, and there's five problems with this. One, do they like video games? Two, is it something that they, I want them to learn as a multimedia experience or rather have them go to these museums and actually see it for themselves? And then if I force feed them this, are they actually going to take it? Or is something like a game supposed to be enjoyed by its own merits? The last one is like, I don't want them to be trapped into a thing like history or is a thing like something entertaining, but that's not what they want to do with their life. But I'm interested in it. So I'm going to give you all these games so you're going to be interested in what I want, like some sports fathers. And then the last one is like, I generally like video games. I don't want it to become fucking number munchers. Like I want my video games to be good and all the other shit video games to disappear from the face of the planet. So I don't want that also category so to never be look on Steam There's also ever. the potential for... Right. <laughs> well, so there's also the, the potential for like games to take away from the reality of what the occupation or whatever As opposed is. to books that totally give you all the truth. <laughs> I mean, I that's a fair point, but I'm, you know, like, I'm thinking making a game out of numbers. For me, that wasn't interesting. I didn't care about getting to the next level on number munchers. That, to me, was a waste of my time. I would rather just learn the fucking tables. Numbers, to me, were not an exciting thing. I didn't need to make a game out of it. I was happy to learn the numbers as they are without the game. Now, I'm not saying that other people couldn't benefit from it. It just wasn't for me. Micah, uh, I think gamification would be a nice auxiliary tool, but I don't think it should be relied on as the main source of information being conveyed to students. But I do agree with you, Micah, that the whole system of schooling by activating your trap card is correct. <laughs> the idea that we're teaching people a factory life setting like we still live in the Henry Ford days <laughs> is total fucking bullshit. Like, you know that too. And you make that point. Oh, the bell rings. I guess that's the end of my shift. I better go to lunch. The way that our school system, at least when I went to school, 30 years ago. It feels like that's what it was. Like you're just getting prepped for some really crappy, terrible factory life. And that's it. And I don't, I think if we want to be able to survive as not just as a species, but as like a country in this United States of America, we need, to, we need to radically change how we view teaching kids. Double edge of the sword though, is that you don't want to teach them critical thinking too much because you don't <laughs> want them to rebel against you. Or realize that your authority is meaningless. So we and... need to brainwash yes. them the right amount. We need, yeah. like the Homer Simpson episode where he had like salt water and fresh water and there's two fish. He <laughs> said like he mixed it up at the level where both of them are barely alive. <laughs> so terrible. Like, it's it's hard to make an artificial need. estuary. So anyway, dear listeners, another... thank you for sticking with us where I That's was metaphor, proven though. both right and wrong. <laughs> but next week, I don't know, it'll be another topic. Thanks, Mom. Probably. Thanks, Mom. Thanks, Mom. <laughs>